So in early intervention, since most of the children that we're working with are just getting access to sound, one of the biggest foundational pieces is to um, really look at like what they're doing with the sound that they're now, they now have access to and teaching them um, what that sound means that they can now hear that they have either hearing aids or a cochlear implant. Um, so often the first step is just introducing them to sounds, um, teaching them how to be able to detect a sound or be aware that a sound is occurring, teaching them how to differentiate between two sounds, identify a sound, um, and then comprehend a sound. So it kind of has an overlap with uh, language development, but when you're... Um, um, the difference, I think, when you're looking at just working on um, overall like language skills with a child is that we're really assessing like, um, I'm trying to think, like, um, <laughs> can the child actually hear the sound? Can the child tell that the sound is different from another sound? Um, and that piece really comes first, that sound association comes first before you can start working on um, kind of the receptive language pieces. Then when you're looking at the child's speech development, you want to make sure that they have access to the sounds that you're hoping for them to say. So if a child on my caseload isn't saying certain consonants, um, instead of how you might with another child just continue to model, thinking that they need more practice, you might also need to consider, like, do, are they having, do they have auditory access to these sounds or do they need to return to the audiologist to make sure that they're hearing this P sound or this T sound? That's really interesting. So what I'm hearing is, is this related to the listening hierarchy as well? I know you had mentioned that, that there's this listening hierarchy that you need to like figure out where they're at in the hierarchy. Right. It, it does. Tatum was describing that really nicely. And I think, you know, we, we model it, it's modeled as a hierarchy, but we also sort of see it as a, as a cycle, as more of a circular approach because it can change you know, depending on the child's language level and if they get access to new technology. So yeah, that's that's really what Tatum described as sort of starting off with understanding what sound is. And, and we're talking about, you know, we're both in early intervention, so we're talking about really young children. Um, and actually even, you know, individuals that get cochlear implants sort of later in life if they didn't have a progressive hearing loss. But so you're starting off with just understanding what sound is and then progressing into being able to tell the difference between very small um, differences in sounds. And those are the things that lead to the ability to process language. Mm -hmm. 